So are you here in Montremblant to win tomorrow or are you here to get your Kona slot? Number one, goal number one, get Kona slot. Goal number two, get Kona slot. Goal number three, if possible, if not killing oneself, take part. Do you have the ability or the uh, discipline to slow yourself down to save it for Kona, or are you gonna butt out your inner older Lionel? One should never think that they're gonna have to slow it down. That's arrogant. This is this is some good guys in this race. Anthony Costas is here for the same reason that I am. Justin Dyer probably also is looking for his Kona slot. Um, a few other guys who I'm probably not aware of or naming. One should never go into a race thinking that they're gonna slow down. It's ridiculous. Shouldn't never even let that into your mind. So, I mean, if you happen to be there, which is very, very low chances. If you happen to be there, then of course, of course you're, no one can push themselves that hard without the help of others anyway. So you wouldn't really push yourself that hard if it was, if you were in the lead or you had the Kona slot already, you know, by a fair margin, you would, you, you just naturally, the human mind and body will just naturally slow itself down because it doesn't need to do hard effort. This is 100% within the rules, by the way. It was asked at the pro meeting. Just can't cut the logo. Uh, it's amazing, actually, how quickly it went by. It was like Aaron and I were just talking about this. It was like... You know, we were sitting down, we got the diagnosis, and we were sitting down, and we were like, well, looks like we're doing Tombon. And just like that, it was like the recovery period was over. Time to start training, that was July 1st. Six hard weeks of training, done. Here we are, it was amazing how quickly it went by. And, um, Whatever, it doesn't matter what happens because what I've got from this experience, yeah, you know, I'm on the tight timeline, so I certainly am not gonna reap the fruit, all of the fruit right now of the experience, but uh, I mean, I got the notepad that is half full inside of six weeks from notes and analysis that I've done um, and training thoughts and logs that was something that was very important to me from 2000, basically 10 through to 2000, end of 2017, that for whatever reason I stopped doing in 2018. And so, you know, I'm a self-coached guy who stopped coaching myself in 2018, and that was a huge problem, and it led to not a very good season, not, not to, to my potential, and so, so that certainly has now been appreciated deeply and will not happen again. And as well, for whatever reason in 2018, I think it's all related, I lost, I lost my focus and I started to get distracted for whatever reason, it doesn't matter now. 
and a lot of my training was just hurry up, get done the training that I didn't even really give much thought to so I can go and play golf. And that's fine, golf's a fun sport, but uh, you know, I'm gonna play golf when I'm done triathlon. So, so now I allow whatever, playing golf, a leisure activity uh, on Sunday for three hours. Certainly not in the weeks leading into the race. It's time to focus on racing. It's time to get your mind in the zone. Reduce stress, reduce you know time on your feet. I.e. be a professional. If you're gonna be a professional and be a professional, you know, that was another important lesson. Um, and just the big one I think that I you know haven't had a ton of time but that I that I I know will pay dividends in the future is just a deep appreciation for how much of a privilege this is and how as quickly as this injury has come and gone now that's how quickly my career is going to come and go and you know you only have so many attempts at this thing you know you can do this far forever of course hopefully you can do it forever and I intend to do it forever but where you're still getting high performance out of yourself, your highest of performances, that, that certainly is gonna come to an end and it's gonna, it's gonna come to an end what, what will feel like very quickly. And so uh, having a deep appreciation for that now and knowing that tomorrow could literally be my last race and you always have to have that in your mind because it truly could and if you don't believe that deeply, then you don't get it and you haven't really reflected deeply on life in general and so freak accidents occur all the time injuries happen all the time that end careers and so tomorrow is is I think for me is going to be my showing of appreciation for being able to do this again after you know what felt like a long time and what felt like could have been the end um, and to just show that I am serious now, I'm serious about this endeavor, I'm back. Let's look at all my competitors. All my competitors, or most of them anyway, have professional coaches. They have coaches who that's their job, is to coach them. And so if you're not gonna hire one of those professional coaches, then you need to take on that as your profession as well. So I actually have two professions. I'm a professional coach and I'm a professional triathlete. And you actually have to be thinking like that. And you have to be, you know, these other guys are paying money for someone to analyze and give them daily feedback and write the workouts and write them for the week, for the month, for the year, have a periodization, do research, find out, you know, new techniques, keep their eye out at what everyone else is doing to see, oh, well, someone's doing a little bit, something a little different. Maybe that could help us here. And just constantly be, you know, looking for performance and looking for things in the athlete's life that need to be, you know, lessened or removed because they're negatively impacting performance. And if you're self-coached, then, then, and especially as a professional, then you need to literally be devoting hours per day, in my opinion, uh, on coaching because that's what a professional coach would be doing for you. And that's a big task and a big undertaking. And, and I totally get why most guys don't want to do that. Most guys, the training's hard enough why would I want to spend an hour to two hours each day analyzing and continuing to learn and to grow with regards to training and training methodology? So that's, that's another huge lesson that um, I would at least like to begin to show the fruit of. I mean, these are things that don't happen in six weeks, unfortunately. You don't, endurance sport is a, is a, is a long, it takes a very long time to, to paint the beautiful picture. and. Uh, six weeks is not enough, but I do feel by virtue of the fact that I have been doing this for a long time and I did take a lot of knowledge that I ha I've gained over the last 10 years and applied it. Uh, I do believe that I, you know, I'm in good shape. I can, I can at least compete here. It's not unrealistic to, to think that I could get the Kona slot. I don't think it's unrealistic to think that I can compete in this field. Uh, and so this will just be, for the most part, the beginning of what I see to be as, um, you know, a second chance <laughs> at pursuing this career to the best of my ability. So you brought the stash back. Any final words before tomorrow? 
<sighs> final words. Final words. Uh, Aaron, do you have any final words? No. I'm just excited to be back. Just excited to be part of this whole little thing we got going on here. And uh, I'm just going to enjoy it to the best of my ability. This is like a birthday present.